Welcome, everyone, to this week's edition of Five Round MMA. My name is Alex Ramirez, alongside my co-host, Albert Sita. I want to thank you all for tuning in this week, whether it be on YouTube or on audio version-wise, whether it be a Podomatic, Spotify, Amazon, wherever you get your podcasts at. We want to thank you for tuning in and taking the time to spend this next oh, 30 minutes or so with us as we recap all of the happenings in the world of professional wrestling and mixed martial arts. Albert Sita, how you doing, man? Uh, I'm doing really good. Um, I'm a little bit hungover, but I think it's obvious why. Yeah. Uh, it was a long night for the Arc, uh, the Connor fans, and so I, I had a few brewskis last night. So if I look a little bit under the weather, I do not have the Rona, people. I just, I'm just, I'm just hungover. <laughs> so the the proper twelve didn't drown your sorrows away. No, it did the opposite, man. It, <laughs> it gave me more sorrows. <laughs> So, yeah, this week, as Albert handed out, we are going to talk about our uh, recap and reactions to UFC 257 as on the UFC home screen. Diamonds are forever. Conor McGregor loses in spectacular fashion. We're going to have our thoughts on that. We're going to have uh, our uh, thoughts on a big time heavyweight bout that was officially announced on Saturday night as well. We're also going to preview, Albert, the Royal Rumble. It's coming up this Sunday. One of my favorite Probably my favorite events of all professional wrestling. We're going to look at that event as well. And also talk about the state of the WWE developmental system. Is there even a developmental system now? It's kind of an interesting conversation that I brought upon by uh, the one and only the great Daniel Bryan. So, mm. Albert, um, last week we kind of touched on what your goal is for 2021. That was a diet. Mm -hmm. uh, so you indicated you, you had a couple drinks. How, how's the diet going this, this so far? Actually, it's going really well. Uh, I know I don't show it, but I got six pounds down. And um, it's funny when you start eating better. Uh, <laughs> Your body just feels good. Is that you what just, it is? Yeah, you just feel, you just feel <laughs> so, not only do you feel so much better, <laughs> like when you, when you eat something that's not healthy, like your body really feels it. Like, yeah. and, and, and it's weird because I'm like, like uh, yesterday, I had such a killer workout that I felt like, man, why am I not like, why haven't I done this in a long time? Just because I feel so much better. Yeah. Like I feel more, more active. More. Uh, we do this podcast pretty early. The fact that I can still wake up and with, you know, <laughs> you're, you're, you're it, somewhat yeah, alert, alert, not alert, sluggish. Whatever. So um, it's good. It's going good. I got a couple of weeks and I tell you that I got a little bit down, but um, uh. I mean, the Saturday is for drinking, so yeah, that's, <laughs> I ain't stopping that. You're allowed at least one day. The Rock promotes on his what on his social media, Cheat Day. Granted, we're all not built like The Rock here, but he even promotes Cheat Day. So we're all allowed at least one day to kind of indulge ourselves. Um, just kind of speaking of uh, professional wrestling and mixed martial arts, did you see The Undertaker was on Joe Rogan's podcast this week? Uh, I, I, I saw that he was on it. I haven't checked yeah, I haven't it out. Seen it either, yeah. I haven't heard it or anything like that. But um, from... I I heard mixed reviews. Really, I I I've I've heard someone praise this the the the, the podcast because we get to see another version of of uh, Don Ca I was about to say Don Callis. Uh, the invisible uh, hand, Mark Calloway. Uh, Mark Calloway. Yeah. Um. But I heard that some of the comments he made uh kind of turned off people off, which was. I remember we talked about this yeah. that it could have been an issue if he if he shows more Mark than the Undertaker does he ruin the the character? Yeah, I think um, what it's remember we talked about like him turning into Hulk Hogan like wow this guy was just ended up being really big a douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> um, but obviously Mark Calloway is from Texas. Uh, I think he has very conservative views. I think a report came out a while ago he donated to a lot of um conservative politicians that maybe support some of the more uh, far right um, uh, um, belief system here. So I haven't heard the podcast either, but if that kind of came out, then maybe again, this is just stuff I saw. Like, yeah, I haven't heard it either. You but know, as you're scrolling, I saw that I have not listened to it either. Yeah. I haven't watched it. That's been the, the, the hark of like Mark Calloway, the person he's conservative, which is, there's nothing wrong with that at all. It's just, again, the undertaker's a character. Mark Calloway is a real person. And I think people can probably draw a line between the two and actors have their own persona, you know, their own beliefs and stuff like that. So unless he's going out and like 
supporting their insurrection, then that's kind of not cool. But <laughs> overthrow the government. But there's nothing wrong with being a conservative. Yeah. And, and real, real quick before uh, we leave this subject, you know, what's funny is I feel like Stone Cold set himself up so good because he said his character was just pretty much himself, but cranked up a little bit. Mm. And so I feel like because he was himself, he cranked up a little bit. When it's time to put that character away, all he has to do is just dial it back. Yeah. And I think that's easier, uh, not just as as a as a person to really separate yourself from the character, but like I don't think you judge Stone Cold that bad because the way he talks, we're used to him talking the way he talks mm-hmm. because it's part of his character. Yeah. So it doesn't feel as weird when I hear, even when Stone Cold gives his opinion, it feels like that's what Stone Cold would say. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I totally get you. Yeah. So again, but we're in that weird climate where if you say something that completely the other side disagree with. You're labeled as a, an enemy here, but I, I haven't, like I said, I haven't heard it either yet. I just thought it was, was kind of cool. Again, this is what we're talking about, the world of MMA and professional wrestling. They're going to bleed together a lot more now, so I got to check it out and see what it is. Um, so we'll see. Yeah, we'll, 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 maybe we'll, our homework for this week, Albert, we'll both listen to it and come back and talk about it next week. There How we about go. That? So, um, you know what? Let's get this started with round number one here. So we're not going to do a whole recap of UFC 257 because in all, all honestly, no disrespect to the other fighters here, the only, there's only two fights that really kind of matter in, in, in terms of moving the needle and seeing what's going on next. So let's start the round. Round number one here. Conor McGregor's knocked out in the second round by Dustin Poirier. Um, shocking, not shocking. Depends on who, who you're going for. I picked Conor to win just because that dude, he's, he's done spectacular stuff his whole career. And it looked like he was going to win. That first round, yeah. it seemed like it was just a matter of time that Conor was going to catch him. It was a calf kick that set it up. Dustin Poirier knocks him out. Um Conor McGregor said himself, it was the inactivity that kind of, you know, he, he didn't feel right. I said that in the, in the in the group chat. You can't take a year off in this sport and come back and think you're going to beat an elite fighter like Dustin Poirier, former champion. He only lost to Kahib. I mean, okay, what are you going to do there? Again, you can't, take a, you can't take a year off, especially if you want to come and fight for a championship uh, title fighters. So my question is, where does Conor go from here? Uh, you're, I think uh, we continue on with the lightweight tournament. Yeah. And finally, again, uh, uh, it may not be a surprise to you, but I think the only logical matchup here is Tony Ferguson. Okay. And I think, like, like we, we like we said to Conde, I think this fight should be loser leave town match. I don't know about that. It has to be. I think. I don't know about that. I think. I think Tony t- a lot of Tony's a lot of miles. Left. I think. To- I think. To- <laughs> I, I think Tony, Tony. I think Tony and Connor. Are in their point in their career where I think either you go or you don't go, and they gotta fight each other. I think if Tony wins, he's still in it. Yeah. And Connor, I mean, I think he if he if he were to lose to Tony, the only fight out there is the DS one, and then we can just finish uh, the chapter on Connor. If Connor beats Tony, he's still in the mix. Yeah. And it just makes too much sense to me not to give Connor McGregor uh Tony Ferguson. Yeah. Every other bout doesn't make sense to me. That's the only one. Like, why would you give him Diaz when Diaz still has to put himself in the mix in well, this lightweight think, division? Yeah. So I think I think Tony Ferguson makes the most sense. Well, because I think you're going a different route with this. So there's basically I kind of see now whenever Conor McGregor fights, there's kind of three three kind of categories of people who are watching his fights. There's the car, hardcore McGregor fans who say, you know what, run it back again with Dustin Diamond, and we'll see what happens. Right? There's that one. Right? Oh, he, he, he's run it back. We'll see what happens again. There's one like your point of view where, okay, well, this is where you can kind of logic a goal now here. And then there's also the ones kind of like your, your brother, Guillermo, our co-host. I don't ever want to see Conor McGregor in the main event ever again. <laughs> <laughs> He's trash. He doesn't deserve to be anywhere. Right. Is you kind of, that's kind of the three, right? Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 That sounds about right. Yeah. So I think honestly, his days of fighting for the championship are gone, but we kind of established last week in the weeks um, prior to this, Conor McGregor is bigger than the championship. Yeah. That's why you have in the back burner that DS trilogy fight. Yeah. Where that's big. Unfortunately, sorry, Kahib. Sorry, Justin Gaethje. Sorry, uh, Poirier. That fight is bigger than your championships, uh, your, your, your division's championship because it's Conor McGregor. So for people who are saying like, you know, oh, Conor's done. Get him out of here. There's a lot of fights left for Conor that aren't championship. Cal- you don't need a championship. UFC is already teasing what happens when, they, when him and Dustin meet again because it's technically one and one. Yeah. So they, they, there's that in the back burner. 
even if Dustin Poirier were to go and win the title, guess what? Conor McGregor still, I still have a win over you. So no matter how, as much as you hate that Conor McGregor, if you hate him, guess what? The UFC is always going to find a way for him to be on top, yeah. on top main event in a pay-per-view, whether it be a grudge match between him and, um, Diaz, or you know what? There's still an argument for him to fight the top guys in the division because yeah. Poirier is a top guy. All he owns a win over Poirier. Like you said, if they're going to go the route of him going back to the title fight, there's Tony Ferguson, there's Justin Gaethje, there's Michael Chandler who called him out. So McGregor's here to stay. If he wants to stay, he's not going anywhere. Yeah, and I, I was just going to say, I think it would be interesting to see what route the UFC takes. I hope they continue. Uh, to me, if, if they give him someone like Tony Ferguson, they're treating Conor McGregor like a fighter, where I think you have to get get back to Dustin Poirier because Dustin Poirier and Michael Chandler have to get it on. In my, in my in my view, it's either either Dustin faces Michael Chandler or Michael Chandler fa- faces Justin Gaethje or Dustin Poirier ch- faces Charles Oliveira. Well, we have the Only, next round. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I don't want to get to it, yeah. but I'm just saying it'll be interesting to see which route UFC takes because if they run it back with Dustin Poirier, it, it seems like a money grab to me. So real quick. In your gut, what's the next fight? When, when, and who is Conor McGregor fighting next? When and who? I'm a hope UFC does his right and he fights Tony Ferguson. Summertime. Tony, no. I, matter of fact, I think two months. Spring. Two to three months. Maybe late spring. Oh wow. Okay. Tony. Tony versus Conor. I think they're gonna do summertime DS trilogy, Ooh. international fight week. Hopefully by then more uh, cities and countries open up, get that in the crowd going. So. That's it for round number one. We're going to come back and talk about what Albert was getting into. Now the roadmap and what what's the uh, the landscape looking like for the UFC's lightweight division and what matchups are next. Don't go anywhere. We're coming right back. Five round MMA. Welcome back. Time for round number two. So now that Conor McGregor is knocked out and he's no longer in the immediate uh, title pitcher for the UFC lightweight division, we can kind of um, – See where it's going at now. And I think uh, we talked about it last week, too. Is like We hate the fact that Conor McGregor was holding up this division. Now that he's knocked out, there's no real justification for him to try and get Kahib out of retirement. Um, Kahib did say he's looking for something spectacular out of the main event and co-main event for UFC 257. Um, Michael Chandler did something spectacular, and so did Dustin Poirier. So we'll, we'll kind of see if he was really saying that or if just say – Crown McGregor has a win, right? So, but do you think Kahib's coming out of retirement? Uh, no, no I, not I, not for any of the, not for not for Poirier, not for Chandler. I right? think realistically, it was pretty much Connor or Doing nothing. Doing something right? Yeah, I, I think that's what he that's what he should have said because that's what it really seems like. Yeah, but if he was about the fight, he it would be Michael Chandler. Yeah, because not only did Michael Chandler look so good against Dan Hooker, like I like we said in the previous podcast, until. He faces an elite wrestler too. There are always going to be question marks like, well, maybe it's just his wrestling. Well, face uh, a guy that is is just as good as kinda, you. They, they it, cancel each other out and see. Yeah, what and see what. Like. Yeah. So and, and we saw Michael Chandler got stand up. Yeah. And it even blows my mind to think about if what if UFC can get Petbull. <laughs> yeah. If Michael Chandler is so good against Dan Hooker, imagine Petbull in, in this division. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I think, well, for those who have been following Michael Chandler's career, he's been draping himself the American flag for a while now. But I thought it was kind of prominent. He did it um, on Saturday. And he kind of had the whole USA versus Russia thing that the UFC, UFC might want to build on. Um, but now we're – so now we're in the lightweight division now. Um, the good thing – the great thing and bad thing about Twitter is you see people's immediate reactions, right? Um, it was like – you gotta put Poirier versus Chandler. There's no other. There's no other. There's no other fight to make. But Poirier versus Chandler, top two fighters in the in the in the lightweight division. That's a fight to make. You know, everybody from fans to members of the media. But like, go back a month ago, wasn't Charles Oliveira the uncrowned champion of the lightweight division? Now he's not even in the conversation anymore. So that's what happens when you have everybody's immediate reaction. But now that Connor's gone, so we have what Dustin Poirier, Justin Gaethje still out there. Michael Chandler, who made a big statement, and Charles Oliveira. That should be, what, the top four tournament for the lightweight division, you think, now? Yeah, that should be where we're out in the Eliminator. Yeah. And to tell you the truth, uh, Dustin Poirier pretty much only has two options, which is Michael Chandler or Charles Oliveira. To make things interesting, I think it should be Dustin versus Charles. Uh-huh. 
and then <laughs> Gaethje versus Chandler, and then winner out of those two bouts, we get the interim. Yeah. Well, or real. I mean, you know what I'm saying. Then yeah. The winners out of those two will fight for the interim belt. Yeah. Well, the real champ because Keith's gone, right? Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I mean, who else is in the top? Uh, top this top five anyway. So we got uh, Gaethje, Poirier, Charles Oliveira, Conor McGregor at number four. UFC's ranking sucks so bad. And you got what Tony Ferguson? I agree with that. Tony Ferguson still top five. I agree with that totally. And who's below Tony Ferguson? I can't see. Uh, Dan Dan Hooker. Hooker. I mean, he suffered a, a pretty hard knockout loss. Who's behind, who's behind Dan Hooker? Uh, Rafael Dos Anjos. I don't like that. I don't think see him. Who's uh, number Paul Fielder? I don't like that either. And then Diego Fra. Yeah, once he gets it's start- just pretty much Gaethje, um, Poirier, all of I think before that we said that's Chandler. that's what it that's. Where we're left Chandler's off. not ranked, but yeah. So I think yeah, that's what it is. I, I, th- I think you have to do some kind of mix of that. If, if Kahib's out of the story, you do those matchups. I don't think they should, it, Dustin Perey and Justin Gaethje should not be matched up because we've seen that bout. Yeah. And, and I feel Justin Gaethje has more to prove against Michael Chandler since he lost to uh, Kahib as well. Mm-hmm. And he also has a lot. He, I think fighting against Charles Oliveira – doesn't really make sense to me because um, Dust uh, Dustin Prey is the one that has to also show he can be a grappler, and that's why I feel like Charles Oliveira is better. I like you, suited man. that I, way. I don't, honestly, out of those four, I almost think it's, it's Charles Oliveira's time, man, <laughs> to win the title. I can, I can see him being Dustin, yeah. and then I and then if let's say Michael Chandler beats Justin Gaethje, I. Can, I could potentially see Charles yeah. Oliveira being Michael Chandler. Too. And then, like we, we talked about last round, we have sort of the losers bracket with Conor McGregor, Tony Ferguson. You got to put Dan Hooker now in there. Um, so, and then you could probably throw somebody else in there too. Uh, the dark horse could be Javier Dos Anjos, but he kind of jumps around between welterweight and lightweight. But he's still he's still there a factor. Paul Felder is kind of a head scratcher let, to me. Let, let me give you. I know we ran out of yeah. time, but let me give you a a crazy. A, a crazy matchup out there. What if Nate Diaz fights He's Charles right. Oliveira? Why? <laughs> but I Why? mean, <laughs> it puts him it puts him right back in the mix if he can win. Okay. And if Charles Oliveira beats Nate Diaz, he pretty much is the uncrowned champion in, in some people's eyes. Yeah. If he could do that, and that's kind of like that's also Nate too. So he, obviously, he's fought a majority of his career lightweight, but can go up to welterweight. And then jiu-jitsu so. versus jiu-jitsu. That's always that's always uh, I mean, cool. He, Nate Diaz could sell any fight. It's just like, okay, for Oliveira, who's on the quest for... There, there's basically, like we said, there's a fighters who are fighting for the championship, and there's a fighters who are fighting for the spotlight. Diaz isn't a... You know, he's going to be a spotlight fighter where it's not exactly on the, the championship path. If Oliveira wants that gold around his waist, I think don't take the fight with Nate Diaz because it's almost like clickbait, almost. Wolf tickets, to quote the Diaz brothers. But... Again, it, it could sell, and you could justify yourself. Hey, I, I beat Diaz. Give me a title shot just for the, the notoriety. So, a lot of interesting things happen. I'm honestly, Connor losing made things a lot more excited because you know if he would have won, we would have had Kahib versus Connor, and that would have not changed from the previous yeah. fight. I think so. Um, for the fight fans, I think Connor losing was the best thing to happen because look how many. A potential matchup yeah. we have now. Uh, for the casual fans and for his hardcore, him losing is probably devastating. I don't know that's how I felt when Tony Ferguson lost, but what, <laughs> now you feel my pain. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. Ho- hopefully the UFC kind of sticks it right and get it re- rewards the fighters who've been fighting uh, constantly this whole time. So that's it for round number two. We're going to come back and talk about the big-time UFC heavyweight championship bout that was officially booked coming up in round number three. Don't go anywhere. Five-round MMA. Welcome back. Time for round number three. Let me get this timer up going real quick, Albert. Sorry. Let me get this timer going. All right, timer started here. Uh, it, was, uh, last, uh, it was announced on Saturday, heavyweight matchup, the return of Stipe Miocic versus Francis Ngannou, uh, UFC, what, 258, 259? What is this, Albert? UFC 260 uh, taking place Saturday, March 27th. Also on that card, featherweight bout. Um, Alexander Volkanovsky versus Brian Ortega. But I want to focus on the heavyweight matchup because anytime the heavyweights are announced, it's a big time matchup. Stephen Miocic versus Francis Ngannou, who almost murdered Alistair Overseem, Alistair Overseem a while ago. Um, basically, basically because um, I'm pretty sure John Jones is going to be looking at this uh, fight pretty closely, right, Albert? 
Well, Dana White already said he's getting the winner. Yeah. So he has to watch it very closely. So who do you if you're if you're John Jones? Sorry, we're gonna take away from Stipe and Francis here, but John Jones is the bigger star, uh, despite uh, Stipe being in Modelo commercials. Um, who do you want to win if you're John Jones? If I'm John Jones, he wants uh, Stipe to win. Stipe, yeah. Because I think uh, matchup wise, I think he matches up way better against Stipe. Especially since uh, DC, I st- I think DC won two f- two out of that three. I don't care what anyone says. I think DC won two out of three. Yeah. So I feel like John Jones can probably win if he fought him three times. I think John Jones can win all three times. Yeah. I I'm still like, Miocic has been like the one of the longest reigning champions ever, but this whole talk of him being the greatest heavyweight of all time, especially in the UFC, I'm like, he got to be more active than once a year for me. He fights about once a year, right? So for Stipe, yeah. The if you want to, we're talking about Stipe, right? Yeah, yeah. He fought once in twenty twenty, once in twenty nineteen, in twenty eighteen he fought twice. Okay. In twenty seventeen fought once. So yeah, so like he's averaging maybe one fight a year. Like I know he has a great career as a firefighter, I, Albert. You know, you and I know both know these firefighters make great. Um, especially retirement and benefits, right? So, like, he doesn't really need to fight, probably. But, like, this whole talk of him being the great, he got to step up the activity, bro. Once a year, for me, I, like, you got to be active at least once or th- you know, at least two to three times a year to defend your champion. George St. Pierre averaged, what, three three fights a year almost when he was active? Yeah. Um, And I think the well, I think the real issue is is the heavyweight division There's itself. There's no contenders? Yeah. I mean, it's just the mosh pit of, 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 of the division. And it's really super top heavy. Yeah. The fact that Junior Dos Santos was still considered <laughs> still considered a, a, contender, a contender, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh and even also over technically is still one win he's only one win away from getting a title shot. From getting a title shot too. So I blame more the division for not having Rather than just like taking a fight to take well, a fight ex- if you want. Exactly, yeah. So for Francis, do you see him capturing this title at all? I mean, all it takes is one one shot from him. But, you know, this fight has happened before, and we all saw what happened last time, right? Stipe was able to use his grappling and um, wrestling to sort of nullify Ngannou's power. Do you see this changing at all in this fight? Um, I think Ngannou's going to come in with a better confidence. Um, and with that confidence, I think the, the punch will land. Um, the only... Again, if I the, if Stipe can avoid getting hit and then getting to deeper rounds, I see Stipe winning. I can if you watch Francis, sometimes he goes too crazy so he can get caught. Yeah. So I can see that as well. But I don't know. I I really feel it's Francis's time. And not only that, I want to see. As a uh, me personally, I want to see Francis versus John Jones. As a John Jones and hater, and more, yeah, as a, more because I'm a Jones hater, and the potential of Francis knocking him out is <laughs> is more likely than than yeah, Jones exactly. out John Jones. So basically, we're all watching to see who could beat John Jones. Unfortunately for these two heavyweights, and I think the UFC is going to market that way too. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they remember back in the day they would have the number one contenders sit ringside. Um, if we're somehow in March, we're looking a little bit better uh, in COVID or you can make it because John Joe just test him for COVID and have him sit ringside. Right. Well, I don't know if you saw that the, all the, how many people were at that Abu Dhabi yeah. fight with Connor. Dude, they could put anybody there, dude. That, that looked like a lot of people. Up yeah, in there. so the Jeff the UFC will definitely have that here. But it's uh, exciting. Finally, the heavyweight division's back in the news. Uh, we have to wait till March to see it go. But um, heavyweight division in every combat sport, man, that's a, people love it because it's knockout. It's it's knockout potential here. Um, Stipe, to no offense, but this guy is behind Volkanovski. He's probably the least talked about champion, right? <laughs> of all the UFC champions for the UFC. So hopefully we can kind of uh, make some noise in the heavyweight division and get this more consistent um, championship bouts and get this in the forefront in the, um, of the UFC's marketing. So we will see that. That's good. Saturday, March 27th. And for sure, leading up to it, we'll talk more about Brian Ortega because we kind of have to. Uh, two, also, I saw that the uh, the movie Brian Ortega was in, The Tax Collector, is also Ooh. on is on Hulu. So if you guys subscribe to Hulu, you can see uh, Ortega's acting debut on there. He had a couple of lines that was funny. So D- David Ayer always taking care of uh, his 
Los the Angeles boys. Latinos there. So uh, that's it for round number three. We're going to switch gears now and talk about professional wrestling. Albert, I want you to think about this question. Does a UF, does a, sorry, does the WWE currently have a developmental territory? In New York? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, we'll answer that question coming up next. Five round MMA. Welcome back. Time for round number three. We're going to switch gears now and talk about professional wrestling here. Um, in the news, Daniel Bryan was on Lucha Libre Online, and they talked about um, developmental territory. Because as we all know, if you kind of follow um, the dirt sheets, Daniel Bryan's actually taking a lot more creative role for the SmackDown brand. It's kind of a part-time wrestler. Now he's sort of uh, been placed on the creative team. So I think he's responsible for Shinsuke Nakamura getting the recent push for Cesaro get more TV time. So it's kind of good to see that his mind at work here. And when he was interviewing with Lucha Libre online, they asked him about the WWE developmental territory. And Daniel Bryan said straight up, we don't have one because NXT to me, to Daniel Bryan, that's a third brand. It's no longer developmental. And Albert, too, do you agree with him on that one? Or do you still see NXT as developmental? I agree 100 percent that NXT now is not a, de- a developmental territory. I feel like it. The reason they keep comparing to AEW or like they, they, you see that you have a Wednesday Night War, yeah, is because it, any of these guys can go to AEW and be perfectly fine. And the NXT guys, yeah, any of the NXT guys. Uh, but I think that's a good point. Yeah, yeah but I think there's a little misleading here because I feel like Duty has shifted to like. Before it was called NXT, but now it's just you're in the performance center. Yeah. I, I think you hear about people that get signed by WWE, but they're just at the performance center. They're no longer signed to NXT. Yeah. yeah. But it I can I can see why that's also like bad because the uh, when NXT first started, you you would put these guys in there from the performance center. They're super green and they'll probably having their first matches in NXT. But then you also have the guys like Kevin Owens, Finn Balor, who there's no reason they should have yeah. been in a but to, developmental to learn the WWE way to yeah. do things, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's 100% NXT is not. But I will bring this up. Um, again, uh, I am a I'm a I'm a smart. So uh, yeah. uh, just to let you guys know, AW started another YouTube programming with the Nightmare Factory, which is pretty much um, Cody Rhodes's like. Training center in, in Atlanta. Don't understand shit at all. But the Don't point. Talk about this. But hold on, hold on. But they show literally, he people that are trying to be a wrestler enter his program. Yeah. And he airs it like if it was an actual show, but it's nothing but students. So that's a true developmental system because even though these guys have had some practice, they're literally figuring it out. Okay. So I think that's where Daniel Bryan was trying to get something more like that. But you don't you don't think it hurts NXT when all that media outlets are reporting? Like here we have Damian Priest. Damian Priest is getting called up to the main roster. If you're a baseball fan, that's what it's that's what it's called. Basketball, the D League, getting called up from the other G League now, getting called up from the minor leagues to the yeah. main roster. They still refer SmackDown and Raw to the main roster, which is dumb. So I mean, but then you also have like guys like Finn Balor who came again back down from the main roster to NXT, but because it's it's like almost saying like imagine catching uh, Anthony Davis in the G League. Uh, for a while, it's like that. I mean, I understand, like in baseball, when someone gets hurt, they're doing recovery and they go to the single yeah. way, whatever. You know, you got to ease yeah. into it. But have you seen NXT matches? You can't, <laughs> no, no. E- you can't ease your way back to the main roster through NXT. Okay, so what do you think now that NXT has to do to be recognized as a a third brand, or do you even want an NXT match on WrestleMania? Do you want NXT uh superstars to be category to have their own Survivor Series team? Do you want them to keep or just Take over, take over, take over. Well, I mean, no, see, I think if you want to put in the same level, level uh, play, a little playing field. Oh, take a shot on that one. <laughs> yeah, uh, playing field. You gotta, you gotta include them in the Survivor Series and all that stuff because you never hear Raw address SmackDown as not being. Not only is it not a main thing, but they kind of intertwine every now and then. And it, to put NXT in the same level, you have to do the same thing. Yeah. So you do like, like you said, in WrestleMania. Uh, you're gonna have the SmackDown champion. You're gonna have the Raw champion, NXT and you champion. should have the NXT champion. No, I mean, 
take nobody over, to take over the night yeah, before. Yeah, you got to put it. And I understand the difficulties as far as putting these things together because some people reviews are already like three hours long. Yeah. And I mean, some of the people that are in the quote main roster um, can't even make it into some of these pay-per-views or they're in like a dark match. And now you're going to include all this roster from NXT. Yeah. So I can see the difficulties behind it. But if you want to put it in the same level, that's what you got to do. But then what's also on the main card, WrestleMania, what, what goes higher, the intercontinental championship or the NXT world title? What do you put and is it a shot at the IC title if you put it on before the NXT World title because it's developmental? Oh, yeah. So, and also, it, it really depends on what Triple H sees it. Does he want it completely separate from? I know, maybe he maybe he doesn't even want NXT to be featured on WrestleMania. Maybe he doesn't even want like. But that's the only way you you would say it's equivalent to because I think it's also insulting to say some of these guys are in their dev, developmental. Uh, yeah, brand. Like it's Johnny, like, Johnny Gargano. Like, yeah, Johnny Gargano doesn't need to develop anything. Well, uh, Adam Cole. Cole yeah. Are you serious to say that Adam Cole, that guy, can go to New Japan? Yeah. and headline New Japan. Yeah, stop. A- you can go to AW, AW and headline AW. It's if what's his name allows if, him to. Y- yeah. If Cody Rhodes allows him to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know he you you would made of it. All I'm saying is, yeah, it, it is insulting to to some of the more like I would say ninety percent of of the roster. It's insulting to say they're in development. Yeah, it's interesting. So see what it is. I mean, again, but again, when it when I hear the supports of so and so is getting called up to the main roster, that keeps NXT at a developmental thing. So, but who knows? I don't know, man. It's interesting. I I still see it as a third brand. We've seen these guys in person a lot. You know, before they got signed to WWE, I see it as a full fledged third third brand. I don't know if Vince McMahon does it. I don't know how Triple H is selling it. And the, the one day when. Vince McMahon steps down or when he's no longer here, what because of NXT and who's in charge of WWE, you know? So what, that's going to be a whole different thing too. So, and then I, maybe they don't even need developmental, just yeah, sign guys, was, train them, exactly. put them in dark matches like they used to. That's like, what, honestly, I would just erase the, these dumb brandings like SmackDown, Raw, it just, it's WWE. Yeah. And you can watch the lower end of the roster on our Wednesday night programming. Yeah, uh, I agree. All right, so all right, we got one more round coming up next. We're going to preview the biggest event of the year, my favorite event, the WWE Royal Rumble, coming up next. Five round MMA. Welcome back. Fifth and final round, Sunday, January 31st, the WWE Royal Rumble, my favorite event of the year, takes place. Um, so much could happen in these Royal Rumble matches. Now we have two Royal Rumble matches with the women's and the men's Royal Rumble. Plus we have the Universal Championship bout between Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens. And we also have the WWE Championship bout between Drew McIntyre and Bill Goldberg. Why? I don't know why. Um, Albert, what are you doing? You Rumble oh, Square. Oh, oh. <laughs> Wrong one. <laughs> I, I clicked on Royal Rumble and this popped up. <laughs> so go back to the main card here for that. Um, real quick, do you even want to think who, who do you got for the Roman Reigns versus um, Kevin Owens fight match? Well, of course, not only it, not only do I think Roman Reigns is going to win, of course I'm going for Roman Reigns. Yeah. Because I am not a Kevin Owens, Kevin Steen fan at all. Never was, never will be. I can't get behind someone. Of that character, <laughs> uh, scroll down because if you see the see the card, um, I think too. I think it was the big dog man. If someone's going to dethrone Roman Reigns, it, unfortunately, it better not be Kevin Owens. It's not. It's not going to be Kevin. Unfortunately, it's not going to be Kevin Owens. Um, what about the WWE Championship about Bill Goldberg versus Drew McIntyre? Now, honestly, I honestly don't know because they've we've seen WWE throw the belt on Goldberg for a little bit. So this is the way. I put Kenny Jack Hammer, Drew McIntyre. Sure, why not? I don't think so. Oh, okay. I don't think you pick him up. So you can't do it then. <laughs> so he could spear him though. He could spear and win it that way. Yeah, but the fact that I don't think he can Jack Hammer, I don't think they're gonna give it to him. Can you Jack Hammer Drew McIntyre? <laughs> Hell no! I exactly. Then <laughs> that's why I would never be the WWE <laughs> Universal Champion. Honestly, I I, I will want to say uh, McIntyre obviously, but I have the way they've been booking Goldberg these past couple of years. I have no idea. No, yeah, I, I'm in the same boat, but I think just imagining Goldberg trying to do that jackhammer is not. That's why he has a spear, yeah. my friend. But you, you, you can't win with the spear. <laughs> yeah, you, you can. can. He's done it before. He'll do it again. 
I just That's have, ridiculous. I just have no idea. So that was a toss up for me. And then the men's Royal Rumble and the women. Let's go to the the, the women's first here because I'm pretty sure they're, they're gonna book that one first. Unless Ronda Rousey comes out again, then they'll book it last. <laughs> they did that one year, remember? Yeah. Um. So far, who's declared so far? We I got, declared myself <laughs> in the. Uh, so we got Alex Ramirez. <laughs> nah, <laughs> so we got uh, Nia Jax, Charlotte, Bianca Blair, Bailey, Mandy Rose, Dana Brooke, Peyton. Uh, Alexa Bliss, uh, Shayna Baszler, Liv Morgan, Ruby Riot, and Tamina. That's about what twelve so far declared. Yeah, a weapon to uh, what's her name? Uh, do, 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 uh, Sasha Banks. Fr- from yeah, is she not declared? Oh, it's that? because she's the champion. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, and then yeah. Uh, yeah, I knew, I knew oh, that. and then Mike, where's where's uh, uh from the Heart Foundation? Uh, Natalia. Natalia. Well, those are the ones who declared. Oh, so okay. they still got. You tell me uh, Natalia couldn't declare? Maybe she'll declare on Sunday. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, that made, that means you have room for, what, about 15 surprises? A little more than 15? Um, so you got 12 out of 30 that have been announced? Yeah. So, about, yeah, you got roughly half left yeah. of surprises. Which could be Natalia. Do you think they'll throw in some NXT stars in they there? They got to. Yeah. I, I think I think that that, that remainder is going to be half you know, of whatever they have left of the women's roster, yeah. the other half NXT, yeah. and then whatever's left over is going to be surprises. Okay. Um, I, even though I think, um, uh, I think it's gonna be somebody who's declared already and I'm gonna go with Bianca, Be- Bianca Belair on, um, that's my pick for the 2021. And that's not a bad pick Royal because it's been seen like she's getting a lot more social media push. Mm-hmm. And I feel like whenever you see more of a wrestler, yeah. they're, that's their way of positioning them to get a push. She's been getting a lot of TV time. So I, I'm not mad. I, I, I think, yeah. I, I think that's, that's not, that's not a bad pick. Who do you got for your pick? For my pick though, I think I'm going to, I'm going to go what I think is the obvious, which is Bailey Bailey. And you continue that Bailey versus you, Sasha yeah, Banks wrestle, WrestleMania. Yeah. Just because the, like that. the, the, the payoff for that rivalry ending in WrestleMania, it just makes it better. As far as storyline wise, they, 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 and the feud at WrestleMania. It's just a cool. It's just You know what? Cool I like think. that. I think that would be the ultimate reward for them too from a rivalry that started yeah. in NXT that had that great takeover match a few years ago. They've evolved here on the on again the main roster. Yeah. <laughs> on Raw SmackDown and it culminates into their own one-on-one match. At WrestleMania, no, don't inject a Becky yeah. Lance, don't inject a Charlotte, a Ronda Rousey. You have them to. We're gonna go over this round. It's okay though. Um, I think that's a good reward for them. I think if that does happen, I'd be 100 percent behind that. Um, for the men's now, you want to go to the men? Talk about that more. The women's roster or? Uh, no, no, no. Let's okay. go to the guys. So, uh, who has officially declared themselves? So in the Royal Rumble, we got tw- we got 12 out of 30 okay. as well. So it's Daniel Bryan. Bobby Lashley, AJ Styles, Randy Orton, Otis, The Miz, Jay Uso, Cesaro, Jeff Hardy, Sami Zayn, Dolph Ziggler, and Shinsuke Naka Naka Nakamore. <laughs> so I think with with the men's roster, they obviously have enough where they don't need to pull guys from NXT. I don't think they will have any. From NXT. I think I think they're gonna at least have two. You think for NXT really? Yeah, I think uh, I think Triple H is gonna push for it, and not just that. If you're looking for the, how can I say? If you're going, you're scrolling through Amazon. I mean Amazon. Sorry, Instagram, and you see the WWE page. I think a lot of people will, would stop and watch it if you see, let's say, Adam Cole, uh, oh, it, it okay. being in, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I, I think there's going to be at least two NXT guys. Okay. At least. But other than like, you don't want to see Adam Cole thrown over the top rope unless he's like one of the top final four, which he could be. And you probably, he probably could. So I think out of this one, you got to think about how WWE is going to want to book this stuff and what they want to be featured at WrestleMania. And honestly, yeah, uh, Drew McIntyre is a great champion, but he is, he fails. He falls in the shadow of the big dog, Roman Reigns. So, you, you know, they're going to want Roman Reigns in main event WrestleMania. So I'm going to go with the SmackDown star to win the Rumble, and I'm going to go with Daniel Bryan. I'm also going to go with Daniel Bryan, okay. but hear me out on my – explanation of Daniel Bryan then I'll tell you what maybe something else can happen Daniel Bryan is looking for part-time work uh-huh. next year he wants to line his schedule and the Roman Reigns has been talking the storyline of being the big dog and being the head of the table that I think at Wrestlemania it would make sense 
not only does he beat Daniel Bryan at the biggest stage of them all that will certify him as the true champion, mm-hmm. but in a way where Daniel Bryan is going to be allowed to take time off the following year. Yeah. So he doesn't have a full time schedule. Yeah, you get so, you get speared out of the arena. I guess something, yeah, right. yeah, something like that. So I think I think that makes a lot of sense to me. But knowing WWE, they could do dumb stuff left and right. And it wouldn't surprise me if Jay Uso wins and they you know, it could be a thing where Roman's like, Well, I thought we were I thought we were done and you accepted I'm head of the table and maybe yeah. Jay Uso's like, nah, bro, I ain't done and they they run it back for WrestleMania. You know what? The more I'm staring at this the poster. Are you going for Dobb Ziggler? No, fuck <laughs> Shinsuke Nakamura. I'm teaching up to Shinsuke Nakamura. Who is a previous winner? Yeah. Two, no, yeah, they're not gonna have they're not gonna have Shinsuke win. Uh, two remember, times. remember that Royal Rumble was it was Shinsuke and um Oscar. Uh, Oscar, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, no, never mind then. I'm sticking with Daniel Bryan. You're okay. Right. They're, not, they're not gonna make Shinsuke <laughs> a two time cha- a two time winner. Yeah. So I think the. I mean, I wouldn't be mad either. If they threw in someone from NXT and won it I just for the shock factor, Not I mean, keep happen. in mind, he doesn't, they don't have to face Roman Reigns. They can face Drew McIntyre or Goldberg. True. Um, I think it would be okay. Fantasy booking here. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. I think it'll be awesome if Goldberg wins against Drew McIntyre, right? Stay with me. Yeah. And then Matt Riddle wins the Royal Rumble <laughs> and calls out Goldberg. Has Matt Riddle officially declared himself? No, he no, did right? not declare himself. They got just, Keith Lee too. Keith Lee. Yeah, but I'm just saying that's just fancy. But it's yeah. not gonna happen. But I forgot. It's fancy uh, Keith Lee has not officially declared himself, so maybe Keith Lee could come out and win it too. And then Keith Lee versus Goldberg. Oh, I like it. Why? Book it. You want you want Goldberg to like not be in a be in a wheelchair? <laughs> my my boy Keith Lee's going to destroy that. Changing book. it. Keith Lee is going to win the Royal Rumble and he's going to face. Uh, let's go Goldberg. I like it. <laughs> That's it for this week's show. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in here. Um, again, keep up to date with us on social media, Facebook. Not Facebook. We're not Facebook. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at 5 Round MMA. It's F-I-V-E Round MMA. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications on our YouTube channel. Just search for us, YouTube slash backslash 5 Round MMA. We're on there as well. Are we going to say something? Yeah, I was just going to say, are you sick and tired of the Bernie memes yet? No. I am not either. Neither am I. Uh, keep them coming. That's what I was going to say. If you guys follow New Japan Wrestling, Tama Tonga has been lighted up with the Bernie memes. Woo! So that's a, a very unlikely source for the of good Bernie memes as well, too. So man of the people, salt of the earth, Bernie memes. Um, thank you all for tuning in. Again, Royal Rumble this Sunday. Uh, January 31st is going to be fun. Leave us your comments below on who you think will win, and we'll get some engagement too as well um, on social media. So do um, Again, we'll see you guys next week. Have a good one. Thanks for tuning in 